On today's episode, I am interviewing a powerful entrepreneur, mama, badass, who has an incredible story. You know, for the woman that has had her cards like stacked up against you, maybe like felt like, oh my gosh, like when is life gonna change? Like Tara's story is something that you absolutely need to hear. For the woman that maybe felt like she's been too much or felt like people judge her for being powerful and bold in who she is and felt like she had to dim her personality or dim her light like this is for you. For the mama that has felt overwhelmed, that is just trying to make things happen for herself, that wants more for her life but doesn't know how to get there, this is for you. This episode's gonna rock. We'll see you there. Hello, welcome to another episode of your favorite badass podcast, Closing Deals and Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And today, ladies, today, if you've ever felt in your life like that the cards were not dealt for you, that you felt like maybe you could become the woman that you want to be, but you feel like there's so many things in your way, I have a really, really special guest that I want to introduce you to. Tara, not only is a mama, but she has also built a really incredible business for herself. She has an incredible story and she's really not only just doing this for herself, but doing this for others. She's a leader. She's a difference maker. And she is going to come on here and tell you all about it and give you some skills, ladies, so that you can apply this to yourself today. Tara, what is up, queen? Happy to have you on. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm super honored to be here with you today. It's my pleasure. And, um, you know, I, I know we were talking a little bit briefly, you know, before this started today. I just, I just wanted to say, like, girl, like the tenacity <laughs> that you possess is, you know, truly one of a kind. And I know that you're making such a big difference in the world for your kids, for the women in your life, for the people around you. Can you give us all just like a little snapshot of like what you do? And then I want us to go into like a story of, of your background. But first, just so we have a little bit more context, what do you do and how do you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So basically what I do is I help people get started in what I'd like to call a done for you type business. So if people want to get involved in sales and marketing and they just don't know where to start or they don't have anything to sell, they can get started in this business and start closing high ticket sales. And I give them the blueprint for marketing, figuring out who their ideal client avatar is, um, you know, how to create content that converts and then, you know, essentially how to close high ticket sales. So I close their first few, few for them and they get to watch and then after that, I give them all the skills and we do role playing and then they finally get to um, close sales and, you know, make money. So it's been really, it's been really fun to be able to put significant amount of money in other people's hands for them because so many people are struggling right now. And in a lot of other network marketing companies that I've been with, you don't close sales for people like you give them the tools and they go out there and they do it or they don't. So here mm -hmm. it's been nice to really be able to truly help people and put money into their pocket. So that's kind of what I do. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's, let's break this down just so anybody that's listening is trying to understand. So uh, I know you're in a network marketing model. I know that it's a different type of model because it's high ticket versus low ticket. And, yes. um, yeah. And the one thing <laughs> that, uh, frustrates me with network marketing, you know, um, I grew up in a Mary Kay household. So like I saw my mom bust her butt, like earn her Cadillac back in the days, they had checks, you know, and I remember she goes to the parking lot to like pick up her Cadillac and one check didn't go through and then she didn't get the Cadillac. It was like this whole thing. It was so traumatic, you know, but my mom like worked her butt off in there and I grew up around Mary Kay posters. What I realized is that most times in network marketing, it takes a minimum of about 18 months to actually start making real money if you're really dedicated and committed. Um, but what's really cool about your company and who you're working with is that it's high ticket so people can make their money back, you know, the first month and actually make a significant amount of uh, of cash, you know, within the next, you know, few weeks of starting, which I think is, a, is incredible. Uh, and then secondly, you not only did that, but you also built a team. I know that you hit six figures, right, in a month with your team. And I know that you just ran a trip uh, a huge trip as well. And, you know, really making a difference in these people's lives. And you're doing it all while also helping them make their first sales too. Like what has been your experience 
um, with with doing this, and and we'll go into how you got here in the first place. But like your experience with being able to help a woman make those sales and putting cash in her pocket, like that feeling of being able to make that difference in their lives. Yeah, I, I have to say it's one of my most favorite things in the entire world because. We all as humans just want the same thing, right? We just want to, you know, be loved. We want to be accepted. We want to be seen. And we want to be at a point in life where finances are not weighing us down every day, or we don't have to report to work and, you know, work for somebody where we're overworked and underpaid. So the fact that I can really truly help normal, regular, average people that might not even believe in themselves, a lot of people that I talked to in the beginning, they don't feel like they could do this, right? And I try to let them know in the beginning, it's hard because they don't know me, but I'm not here to just tell you what you want to hear. The type of mentor that I am, I'm going to tell you things that you might not want to hear. But what Mm -hmm. I can tell you is that if you actually put in the work, you will be successful. So I just need you to have a little bit of trust in yourself, a little bit of trust in me and in the process. And if you're diligent enough, you will make this happen, right? Right. And so when they come in and then they get started and then they do make that first sale and they're so excited, I I can't even explain what it does for me because I'm like, I told you so, you know, I told you that you could do this. Could you imagine like if you would have just allowed fear to take over and you never got started and they're like, thank you so much. And I will say quickly that being in network marketing, of course, it's fun to have a leader reach out to you and they join forces with you and they're, they're making sales left and right. That's fun. Right. But I take so much pride in enrolling people that might not have the confidence. They might be an introvert. Um, Mm -hmm. They might've tried five other companies and didn't have success, but then when they come over here and they start to have success and I help build them to become the leader that they were always meant to be, that's near and dear to my heart. Like I love that more than anything in the entire world. Mm, I love it so much. I think that you're a powerful, influential leader. And I think that, you know, the women that get to have you pour into their life every single day are super, super lucky. I always see you posting about them all the time online and like holding all these checks and stuff. And I'm like, all right, Dara's team's winning right now. It wasn't always like this. You know, um, and I know that your story was rough and going through some things in your life, you know, to get here. But I also know that you changed the trajectory of your family's life, especially for your kiddos. Could you give us like a brief insight of like what led you to this moment and like to where you're having the success and you're having the ability to pour into these women that really need it? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually funny because yesterday made eight years ago that I started in network marketing for the first time yesterday. And me and my daughter were talking about it because I just remember that day. But to back up a little bit, um, my mom, my mom was a single mom. It was just me and her. um, And she suffered from depression and she was an alcoholic and, you know, she had her own issues and we grew up super poor. Like we didn't even own a car. And we lived in a very small town where everybody knew everybody. And her three older brothers were all like middle to high economic status. So we were like almost like the black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. And it was a very uppity town. So it was really hard for me to um, grow up just super poor. So anyways, when I was 16, she passed away and Mm -hmm. my dad was never part of my life ever. And after she passed away, you know, I wasn't left with anything. And I moved in with her brother and his wife and my cousins. That was kind of that. And then when I was 21, I had my daughter and then we moved into low income public housing and we lived there for about eight years. And during Mm -hmm. that time, I went to college. I was working two jobs. I got my bachelor's degree. I ended up getting pregnant again with Christian and I was in a relationship and we were together for about five years and then we broke up. And so my confidence and my dreams and everything just like went down. I'm like, well, now I have two kids, by two different people. Who's going to want me? You know, I'm single mom, I'm on, you know, government assistance. And I just put all these labels all over myself. I'll never forget one day I was like having a little breakdown and I prayed so hard to God. And I was just like, you know, I did everything right. Like I worked two jobs. I went to college. Like I never stole, I never scammed anyone. I never did anything. Like, when's it going to be my turn? Like, I'm not afraid to work hard, but like, where's my opportunity? And I was like, it's my season. It's my turn. And I know you're going to put something in my life. Two weeks Mm -hmm. later is when I found 
network marketing. I didn't even know what network marketing even was. So I found this girl on Instagram, didn't know her. And um, I backed out a couple of times, but I didn't have the money to join. So I was like, all right, I have to come up with the money. Took me 18 days. I came up with the money. I hit the ground running. I literally never looked back. I had zero influence. I started a brand new Instagram because my thought process was if I just joined a girl that I don't know, then that means other people that I don't know will join me. Like I knew that from the beginning without thinking about, cause I knew friends and family. I wasn't even trying to ask anybody to join me or buy from me at all. So that was my thought process. My other thought process was if all of these people could do it, then that means it's possible. If it has been done, it can be done. So just show me what I need to do and I will not stop until I do it. Mm. And I did on my one year anniversary, I ended up reaching the top of the company, becoming the number 12 income earner. My team in that previous company is still the number one fastest growing team over there still to this day that I wow. started. Wow. Damn. I'm here to tell anybody that's listening that if you want something, you can have it. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to know that it might not come as quickly as you want it to come. But the only way that it will not happen is if you quit. But if you keep on going and you work harder on yourself than anything else, you will make it happen because in this type of business, even if you're in coaching, who you are as a person is what attracts people to you. So yeah. you have to ask yourself, like, would you join you? Would you sign up with you? Yeah. Would you buy your own program? And if you wouldn't, then that means you have some more work to do on the inside, but you will get there if it's important enough to you. I think there's so much to unpack there, Tara. And like, I appreciate you for being vulnerable, you know, and sharing that. Uh, I think that my curiosity goes straight to your daughter, like, you said that you guys were talking about that the other day, like remembering that moment, you know, how has this affected her life? How has she started to view you? What does she now believe about herself just because of the actions and the decisions that you've been able to make? Yeah, it's actually funny because she was telling me probably about like eight months ago that she was talking with one of her girlfriends and they were talking about college. And she was like, well, I don't know like what I would want to do going to college. And she was like, I'm interested in business, but like, why would I go to college and take out degrees to go to school for business, to learn from a teacher who probably has never had a business when I can just learn from my mom who's run multiple businesses and has helped so many other people to be successful. And when she told me this, like she wasn't telling me to like boost me up. She was just like telling me the conversation that they had. And I just started laughing and she was like, what? And I'm like, it's just, it's just funny for me to hear you say that because I've never really asked her. Like, what does she think about me or like this, you know, but she has said things in the past where she is grateful that we basically started from the bottom and then worked our way up because she got to see what hard work, dedication, never giving up looks like. She has gotten to experience both sides of the coin, just like I have. Whereas my son, you know, when I first got started, he, it, he was two months shy of his second birthday. So in mm -hmm. his mind, he doesn't know anything other than what our life has always been yeah. like. He doesn't know any different. I've always been able to, you know, be the class mom and go on the trips with him and never miss a moment and be at the front door when he gets off the bus. She didn't always get to experience that until about like nine, 10 years old. Whereas he has always, that's just, he's always known that. So it's funny how they have the same exact mom but two different experiences of life, you know? Yeah, you know, I think that uh, as a mom, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but like had almost like that guilt of, <laughs> of like the beginning of like working our asses off and then, you know, maybe not being able to fully be there. Like what has been your experience like dealing with that, you know, dealing with, you know, feeling like, oh my God, I just wanted to create those moments. Cause I see that you've obviously, you know, wanted to make such a difference and an impact with your son. What has been your process with that? You know, just dealing with, you know, guilt or whatever emotions that have possibly come up over the years when you were figuring it out and how have you been able to possibly work through that to give yourself the grace that you need? It's actually a really good question. Um, Cause a lot of people ask me that I would say that because my daughter would say this in the beginning, like you're always on your phone. You're always on your phone. You're always on your phone. And so I would say to her, I know it's hard for you to understand, but this is like my work. This is my business. Like I don't leave the house to go to work like most people do. And I've had to explain that to my son as well. But 
um, what really, really helps me for both of them is every year we create a dream board, a family dream board, and they get to create their own. And so in my very first dream board that we ever created, we put Disney on there, we put um, Atlantis, um, pay off debt, and just like a bunch of other things. And in my first year, I was I was able to experience all of those things. And so then they would take turns with the Sharpie to cross off like the things that we are able mm -hmm. to do. So it just became a thing of we made this um, dream board together. So when they see me working hard, they know that that's what I'm working towards because we're all in, in on it together. And then when they were starting to see like, OK, we got to go to Disney World, we got to go to Atlantis, we get to do this and that. It started to be like, OK, when mom's working, it's because she's working towards these things. The house, that was a big thing for like two years of so I was working towards getting us our house and this and that. And then finally we got the house. And I think like when we got the house, that was like the biggest moment for them, for them to really mm -hmm. realize like, OK, this is really real, not just the vacations and the little things, but the fact that we got to go from like like an 800 square foot apartment where we were like on top of each other, you know, a 2000 square foot house. I finally bought a pool in the backyard and just having all of those things, even for me, it's like my mm -hmm. childhood dreams coming true. I think it's so good. And I think that, you know, that also identifies with the labels that you were talking about earlier. So I want to unpack that too, because First, it was all these negative labels, and now you're creating new labels for yourself. Your kids are creating new labels of, like, what their life is, you know. So back in the moment, um, I see a lot of women do this, you know, myself included, giving ourselves these um, labels of, like, inadequacy, right, of, hey, well, you know, you haven't done this, or you haven't accomplished this, or you're not good enough here, or you don't have the money here, or, or you even talked about something that's so, so powerful about, you know, finding love and finding, you know, what you're looking for. And, and, and we always measure ourselves based off on our circumstances and things that are going on. And we just give ourselves like all these labels. And sometimes that those labels are so strong with what we identify that we start blocking ourselves from the possibilities that we want to create in our life who we want to be, what we want to attract. Where, so it has to be you removing those labels in order for you to have space to add in the new ones. What was your process going through that? That's not easy. You had to work on yourself. Like you just said, work on yourself yeah. harder than anything else. What has been your process over the past few years of removing some of that stuff so that you can, you know, step into who you are right now? So, um, I would say that the hardest thing for me was to stop believing those lies that I would tell myself. It's not even like anyone placed them on me except for myself. So my method was I would get a journal and I would just write everything that was coming out of coming up, everything until I couldn't write anymore. And then I would look at the things that I would say and I would say, is this ultimately true? No. Do I want this to be true? No. Do I want this to be my physical reality? No. Okay. So what's a better feeling thought that you could tell yourself instead mm. of that? And then I would write that down. And then I would just go across from every thought. I would write down the new thought, new thought, new thought, new thought. And I did that for a while. I did that for probably consistently. I would say about a good two years. I did that. And then somebody taught me how to put in your phone, um, like reminders that would pop up at locations. So every time I would go to like the grocery store or Starbucks or even pull up to my house, um, the police stations on the corner, Christian's basketball, anywhere that was, I would frequently go as soon as like the location would hit, the oh. reminder would pop up. So I would stop what I was doing, whether I was on the phone or whatever, I would stop. I'd be like, hold on, I'd put them on mute. Um, and I would say the affirmation out loud, but in a way where I truly like embodied mm -hmm. it and vibed with it. And I would start doing that. And so I would do that for just things I wanted to believe about myself and things that I actually wanted to welcome into my reality. And mm -hmm. I will tell you that the mind is such a powerful thing, even little things I would do like, cause we'll always say like, I just want to make more money. But the thing is, is that you have to be specific because if I give you a dollar, that's more money. You didn't say what you wanted. You just said, I wanted more money, right? So anytime I would find 
a penny, a dollar or whatever. And even one time I did an exercise with my kids where I hid money all over the house and then they would find like the money. And every time we pick it up, we would say like, um, see, my, I'm always supported by money. Like it's always shows up for me. I don't even have to do anything for it. It's just always there for me anytime, anywhere, any place, like every, but I still do that to this day. It could be a penny. And I'm so grateful for the penny because you know, more and more and more will come to you because I had a bad money story because there was never enough money for us. My mom received money from the state of Connecticut, $500. That $500 would run out in two weeks because we were on section eight. So her, her rent was like a dollar and we didn't have a car. So she just paid her bills and whatever was left over. So we would never have money halfway through the month. So it just money was, my money story was bad. And I had to recreate that. And I still work on it still to this day because it will still creep up for me. Okay. This is, <laughs> you're saying so much wisdom right here. And I just kind of want to break this down really fast because sometimes when we say it, it's just like so fast and, and we need to take a pause really fast because there's so much that's to be broken down. There's so much wisdom in what you just said and what you just did. And um, I think you're right. It's in the small things that happens and the commitment, okay? So there's a few things, the commitment, the consistency, right? And then the willingness to stop everything because you want to get better at something, right? You said you would even pause, like, and mute your phone, like, hold, please. Like, I have to be working on me right now. (laughs) Hold, please, you know? Exactly, I would. And, and, but that's, that's so, so powerful. And it's because it's so deep rooted, so deep rooted. So you gave an example of like, I'm always supported by money. What would be like the first like negative thought, I guess that you wrote out that wasn't true? Like, what was that? Can you give us an example of that? My first negative thought would probably always be eventually the money's going to run out and I'm going to lose everything. That was like the first thought Mm -hmm. always. And I still, I still fight with that thought here and there at times where I'm afraid I'll lose everything. You know, I I just celebrated four years August 16th of having the, of having the house. And I remember in the beginning, I I had this weird, I didn't want to have a connection to the house. It was almost like I got the house, but I was crying the day that I got the house. And then thinking in my mind, like, how am I going to get rid of this house? Like, and I had to really tell myself like, okay, let's break it down. Now that you have the house, your bills are $1,800 more. Do you think you and your children are not worth $1,800 more? It's a little scarier but you can make that happen. I really had to talk to myself because I don't have a mom and I don't have a dad and I don't have a significant other. So I've had to learn how to be my own support system instead of being so mean to myself all the time. Why do you feel like so many women are mean to themselves all the time? I think that it's a lot easier to be mean to yourself and it's a lot easier to believe those things for whatever weird reason that is. Sometimes I think that whether it's things we watch on TV or things that we pick up throughout life, it's almost like if you tell yourself like, I'm beautiful on this, it's almost like you're conceited or you're full of yourself or don't be too much of this or don't be too much of that. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no. And as you get older, it's like, you have to undo all of the, all of these things that you learned as being, don't be too loud. Don't be too much. Don't be too this. Don't be too that. Then you get to be an adult and you hear the opposite. Like, no, no, be loud, take up space, be weird, be who you are. You know, it's like you as children and growing up, it's like, whether it be from teachers or aunts or coaches or whoever, we learn all these weird things that we have to be or we shouldn't be, or it's very bizarre if you think about it. Yes, especially because now being in the other place, being a mom, right? I'm sure I have this issue where I parent my child way, way differently than my parents parented me. And I'm like, use that voice, girl. <laughs> you know, she'll get in trouble with something at school. And I'm just like, I, I don't care. You know, I'm just like, just tell me the truth. And we're Gucci, like everything's fine. Because I don't want her to be shut down and to be silenced. And you don't want her to be respectful. But I want her to be okay with being heard. And um, I think that you're spot on with like, I think it's just really, really hard for them to believe the opposite. Like it's easier to believe the things that are painful because you just said like how much it requires of you to be able to believe something new. That the mind is so powerful. 
so powerful. You have to be willing. I did the same thing, um, not necessarily pausing my phone, but I had an alert that would go on. And I would do this thing where I'd be like, oh, cancel, cancel, like delete, delete. Like if I've ever thought about something bad, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to go there. Right. And uh, I would definitely writing out like what I thought and like exiting it out, like putting it on fire, writing out like, no, the truth is this. And like just reaffirming what I wanted, um, especially with money. Uh, I remember, you know, it's hard like going backwards, especially when you've had so many traumatic experiences around money. I remember being, you know, even in the grocery store and going to go buy something for my daughter for dinner. We picked out all the stuff for dinner. We're like, we're going to cook dinner. We're at the grocery store register and my card's getting declined. And she's looking at me and she's like, well, what's wrong? And I looked at my thing and like something came out of my account that I didn't know was going to come out of my account. And I'm like, freaking crap. (laughs) What are you supposed to tell them? You know, they're looking at a little you know, little girl. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, we can't eat right now. (laughs) You're trying to make up some lie to the person. You're like, oh, I left my my money in the car, like awkward, you know, just like leaving. Um, And so there's a lot of money issues coming up for me. And I remember just like, I was driving down the road in Houston, Texas. There was zero money in my bank account. Like I think it was negative and crying down the road, but yelling like, Money comes to be easily, frequently, and abundantly in God's perfect way with no more and add to it. I'm the master of money. Money does not owe me. I own it. <laughs> like, I'm like yelling. Like, I love that. But, you know, that doesn't cure it. It's the consistency of doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And then you start seeing proof. So, like, just like you said, you find a penny, you're like, oh, look, see, I'm abundant. Money's coming to me. I didn't have to do anything for this. And reaffirming, 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 because your brain is looking for, like, a uh, confirmation of what you're saying because it has to agree yes. with it. So, so good. What else, like besides money, what else have you done that for within yourself? What else have I done that for? Just loving myself the way that I am mm-hmm. um, and telling myself that I am enough, just how I am. I don't have to do more or be more or, you know, I never really had a lot of boundaries because I always felt after my mom passed away that I didn't want to be a burden to people because I felt like my home was now gone, right? So I'm living with other people. So I always felt like I had to make myself useful wherever I went so that I wasn't like this thing just like there, you know? And not that people probably even thought that, but you see how like you start to think these weird things and I would always do that. So then I was always constantly giving so much of myself and then wondering why people would never reciprocate that back to me, you know, and then that became like a whole thing. So I had to really just tell myself like me just being a good person and being a good person to friends and family and all that is enough. If I want to help them with something like I can, but I don't have to do those things in order for me to be wanted to be around. Does that make sense? It does, but we all battle with it, right? Um, you know, it's it's hard, uh, especially when you've had a, a rough past to feel like you're worthy just as you are. Like your head still messes with you sometimes of like, oh, no, 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 you need to do more. Oh, it's not enough. Oh, oh, oh. And we battle with ourselves. You know, I think that it's really, really important that we focus on the mindset side, but we also focus on the skill side. Because if I just try to become like manifesting Maddie, that's like my sub character of like, oh, I'm just going (laughs) to let it come, let it come, you know, without doing the work, um, we get really disappointed because you think that you're just going to attract everything in your life. Um, And that's not how it works, right? You have to also do the actions, right? Like the reminders and actually stopping your phone. And Manifestation is dead without action. Correct. So let's talk about some of these skills, right? Um, I want to know how you built this team, what you did, um, you know, how you, you incorporated the sales piece. I know you went through uh, my program going through NAPQ Red, right? Like what was your experience before going through that and kind of after, and how were you able to, you know, help these women like just help us understand like because you built something yeah. super awesome and you know using sales right and the the lure of learning how to do that to be able to support these people like how help us help us understand where you came from and how you built this yeah so I um when I got started I basically went on social media promoted the fact that I was involved in high ticket sales and how I wanted to help other people to get, have a done for you type business. And 
I was really great with network marketing and the low ticket network marketing, even though I was super burned out, but I didn't know how to do high ticket sales. I never took calls before. So that was something that was extremely mm -hmm. for me and knowing that, you know, a lot of people will buy with emotion and justify it with logic. I before would always talk about, you know, being relatable to them. And in a sales call, people don't care about like what you've done and <laughs> How it's like, even though you're trying to form that connection, that's not mm -hmm. how you do sales calls, right? So it was a lot of things I had to unlearn to learn. And even though I was closing sales, the problem was, is that I couldn't explain to my girls how I did it. So mm -hmm. I needed to find a, a way to be able to learn a process that I could then turn around and say, this is how you do it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and so we do have training on my team and stuff, but what I loved about you was your methodologies and your way of heart centered sales and really getting women to feel safe with you because a lot of women carry sister wounds and they're very intimidated by other women. And I know that I have a very strong personality, so I could be a little intimidated, intimidating to people. And not that I mean to be, I'm like, I will give you the shirt off my back, but like my personality is just super strong. So I needed to find the tonality and to like slow down in the conversations and really like allow them to open up and for me to give them that <clears throat> validation. If, not that I didn't before, but like I said, I wasn't, I didn't have the right methodology to do it. So I, I, I saw you before, and then you had that master class, and I literally joined mm -hmm. it like five minutes before it started. <laughs> and I was super sick too. I like had had the flu, but I really wanted to be on it live. And just everything you said was amazing. So um, I think I was actually the first person to join. I was like, I'm just going to do it. So I did. And um, yeah, it was an awesome experience. And, you know, my team is, I think I have six closers on my team now. So since February to now, we have six closers that are closing and doing, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on their own, which is awesome. And every time they send me a text, they're like, I just closed $14,000. I just closed $10,000. It's like, like I get so excited for them because now they're doing it on their own and they experience the feeling that I get when I was closing sales for them. You know, it's just such a, when you can help other people and you don't make it about you, it's just such a fulfilling feeling because I mean, you know, they say it's not fun unless your whole team is winning, you know, it's true. Yeah. And it's like, you're teaching somebody how to fish versus giving them one. Right. Right. They're right. sustaining, they're doing the Absolutely. thing. I want to talk a little bit about the strong personality thing, because um, that's one one way I really resonated with you, Tara, when I first met you. You know, I think that so many times, especially if there's another woman on here that's listening, that also has a strong personality that sometimes possibly might feel misunderstood by people. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't people get me? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. You know, like, I'm really, really nice. And then you're like, always like, seems like you're having to apologize for who you are and like dim down your yes. light in order for other people to feel comfortable around you. That's exactly it. And right. my and so experience is that now. So I, she's like, why does this always, and I'm like, I get it. Cause I've been there. So it's like, I have to help her with feeling yeah. like she doesn't have to water herself down to make other people feel comfortable mm -hmm. about themselves. Yes, exactly. And my daughter's the same way. I see that too. And I'm just like, she's like, everyone's rude. I'm like, okay, well, what are we doing to possibly trigger those people? You know, <laughs> like try to give her some tools and at the same time, you know, letting her understand how important she is and that she doesn't get a dim down because your light, right, shines into other people. You know, your light gives permission to, especially the women that you're training and the women that you're helping and the women that are seeing you and being influenced by you, your stories and showing up online, like it gives permission to them to light up themselves. And um, I had a mentor in my life tell me this, you know, a couple of years ago um, when I was complaining, I'm like, I remember I was at some event for like leadership training and I told myself that I was going to be polite and let everyone else go first because I was always like the first person to go the first. I was like, hey, um, you know what? I'm not going to try to showboat here. I'm going to let everyone else go before me. Like I'm going to be kind and polite. OK, like I'm just going to wait back because normally I'm like, hey, like, let's go. I'm in. 
And everyone went, and there was, like, a few more people to go, and she stood up, and she's like, all right, like, everyone's done. If you didn't go, you missed out on your time to go. I was freaking pissed. I was like, how dare she? You know, like, raised my hand. I'm like, well, I don't understand. Like, what do you want from me? Do you want me to, like, not go, and then, but I'm being polite, or... I go and then everyone hates me. Like, I'm not going to win here. I'm just going to lose. And she looked at me in my face and she's like, don't you ever dim your light for anybody ever again. You know, and like really gave me permission to stop. Like, you are the leader. You are the permission. You're the reason that, you know, people are going to make a difference. Like, you're it. You know, you're it. You're it. You're it. And like, that's my experience of you, Tara, is like, you are it. You know, and your light gives permission to so many other women to step into their light, step into their possibilities, step into their leadership, do their damn thing. I think it's beautiful. And you're also doing it for your daughter. I think it's absolutely the most epic thing that you could possibly do. And I don't think there's ever a right or wrong. You talked about sister wounds. Man, there's so many women that are triggered by other women because women are mean to other women or compare or judge or try to, you know, not understand and, and stand off on the sidelines or, or maybe they went through some type of trauma and now some other woman's triggering that trauma. Like there's just so much here. And I think that us having awareness and making the decision to just one thing at a time, constantly stand in our authenticity and have that big heart, like to pour and like, just like you said, give your shirt off somebody's back. If you're constantly in a, in a way where you just want to pour and give in to others, like, and they can't see that, then that's on them. That's not on you at all. Absolutely. And I had to learn that as well and know that as long as I'm not coming off in a way that's like arrogant or rude or um, condescending or any of that, then how they perceive me or how they choose to perceive me, should I say, really has nothing to do with me. But that's something I really struggled with for a long time was wanting to be accepted and liked just because I had such a strong personality and I wouldn't even do anything. Like I could walk into a room and not even talk and just feel like side eye or like whatever. And I'm like, I haven't even said anything yet. Like, you know, and I felt like I dealt with that a long time. So I always had to overly extend myself to prove something and I will say mm -hmm. as you get older you start to like do less and less of that but on the flip side I will also say that I have women that come to me that are in their late 20s early 30s to even early 40s mid 40s and no matter how old they are they will still be worried about starting a business and they're worried about other people's opinions of them it really does not go away until they heal that part of themselves of worrying about what other people think. And I will always tell them, you know, you, if they have children, I'll say, you tell your children that they can do, have, and become absolutely anything that they want in life, right? And they'll say yes. And I'll say, do you believe that? And they'll say yes for them. They'll say yes. And I'm like, what if your child comes to you and says like that they're worried about maybe, you know, joining the football team or the basketball team, or let's just say, take it one step further and say, join the dance team. You had a son and they wanted to join the dance team, but they were worried about what other people would think about them. What would you say? Would you say, don't do that because people are going to talk? No, you wouldn't. Right. And I'm like, so why would you stop yourself from an amazing opportunity that can help you with Bup, 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 like all the things that they just told me that they want to do this for. And they're like, you're right. It's just crazy mm. how we still at older ages are worried about what other people are thinking. And nine out of 10 times, they're never going to say those things to us. So you're, you mm. are stopping yourself from what people are saying inside of their mind and not even saying to you just what they're thinking, not even saying. Yeah. So many women and so many people in general, I think get in their own damn way. And it's not until you're willing to take a freaking step back, look yourself in the mirror and be like, yo, this is not working in my life. Like if you're looking at your bank account, everyone knows how much is in their bank, right? Unless you completely avoid it. If your bank account right now is not where you want it to be, it is a direct reflection of the skill level that you have, you know? And, um, uh, I understand that people go through some shit like, uh, like <laughs> trust your girl here. Like I understand that maybe like situations and something happened and like things got out of hand. Life, life is going to have those moments. There's going to be ups. There's going to be lows, like real lows, like the low of the lows where you're like, I can't believe if it can get any worse than this. Um, you're going to go through that, but combining everything together, you're the common denominator of of your world like you make choices and things happen and so if you really want your world to change you must change 
and, and really stepping into the responsibility of making that change, of doing the work. Um, if you don't know how to do the work, to find a way to get the skills so that you can do the work on yourself, to constantly just rethink a different way. If you need skills in a certain area, like sales, like marketing or whatever you need for your business to invest in a way to like acquire those skills so that you can get better. Like never, ever stop learning, never stop growing, never stop thriving. Um, I don't know if you know this, uh, but I just registered uh, for Harvard Business School online to start doing corporation like classes for leadership. That's why I'm wearing my Harvard shirt. I got all excited. So I bought shirts. Um, but like, I, I thank you. I'm excited. And it's just like, I'm only taking one class at a time because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I'm in a large corporation and I don't know how to do corporation lingo. So I was like, I need to take a class to be able to be able to communicate with these large other corporations. And I don't want anyone to say that I don't have the ability to do so. So I'm going to take a class, to learn how to do that. But again, it's like finding yeah. where can I grow? And that's in any subject. You know, I think that it's super beautiful for you to make a pathway for other women. I also think that they get to take responsibility to step into who they get to be. And that's on them. That's not on you. Right. And it seems like by you holding your ground, by you doing the work within yourself, you've influenced them to also do the work. Yeah, it's been a very beautiful thing and like a domino effect for them to really see that when you stick things out what can truly happen. I want to give you an example of this girl named Sarah, who is not in my direct um, team, but she's on the team, but she's in a different team. And she joined and for four months, she did nothing, right? She would show up to things here and there, but she did nothing. And then finally, after watching so many people have success and people would join after her and they were having success. Finally, she was able to see, like, say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then the two, like a two month period of time. She's done almost a hundred thousand dollars in sales. She's like running through the levels. And sometimes it really just takes for people to like, really see that if all these other people can do it, you can do it too. You just have to want it that much for yourself. And you have to believe in yourself. Like you can only borrow my belief for so long until you really truly have to adapt to your own belief. And then once you start taking action and you start to get results, your own belief will start to build and then build and then build. Just like we talked about with the, how our, our mind looks for those um, examples or proof, right? It's the same exact thing. You know, you have to create the results, but when everybody always asks me like, well, what was the thing or, or how much did you work in the beginning? And, and I just always tell them like, well, number one, not getting results was never an option. Like there was no, that was never an option. And I never started my business and said like, okay, so I'm going to work two hours today and three hours. No, like I'm very impulsive. So I yeah. was determined to get that first sale. And I was not stopping until I got that first sale. Like it just, what do you mean? How many hours did I put in? I didn't care how many hours I was putting in because I just was determined to make the first sale to, to just, create that belief. And contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, um, it took me three weeks to make my very first sale where I have people on my team who have never done this before. They've made their first sale in 24 hours. Um, wow. but it took me three weeks. And I also feel like, you know, that was kind of God just being like, how bad, how bad do you want it? You know, how do you want it? Do you not want it? Because this is something new for you. And I was like, no way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing exactly what I truly love to do because with network marketing, I felt like that in low ticket, but I got burnt out very, very, very like just that model, but high ticket is just for me and the closing sales. It's just a connection that I love. I love to do. I love just, I love mm -hmm. it. It's not just closing sales and getting the money. It's closing the sale means that I'm bringing a woman into the business to help them and give them the skills to start their own business and do the same exact thing. It's just, I can't even explain like the feeling, but it's like, I just feel like a little mama bear, like helping like all my little babies like grow and be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head with like, I'm going to be successful no matter what, like I have to get this no matter what, like there is no option to fail type of feeling. Um, I think that it can all narrow down to just one word, which is freaking hunger. Like there's a lack of people that are hungry to go after what they want in this world. Maybe they don't believe that they're worthy of it. Maybe they don't really know exactly what they want, like whatever that is, like there's just a lack of hunger 
to go after it. And like, you cannot deny the one that will not be denied. The one that's freaking relentless, right? Relentless, like no matter what, you are gonna put me on. Like, I don't care how many doors I have to open. I don't care how many people I have to talk to. I don't care what has to happen. Like, this is my time, this is my moment. Like, I'm freaking sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> so like woman to woman, I just, I really honor you for everything that you've been able to do for all the women's lives that you've been able to change. Um, if you're a woman on here right now and you're like, Hey, yo, like Tara, holler at your girl, because I want to connect with you. I want to get in your world. I want to know what you're doing. I want to support you. Uh, Tara, what is your, what is your Instagram? Is that the best place for people to find you? My Instagram, it is at Tara L um, with three E. So it's T A R A E L L. E E E. All right. So the E going over to Tara on Instagram and Tara for any woman that's listening to this right now, like what is like one piece of advice or just something that you want to leave them with, you know, for them to ponder to them to think about today before we end here. Yeah. I would just say that if you truly want something in your life, you don't need to consult with anybody else. You don't need to get their permission or their, you know, their idea you if you want something just go and get it and it might not happen right away for you but if you want it you will make it happen and sometimes you have to go through those obstacles to get it because that is where the inspiration comes from and so when you're able to finally reach that level of success or whatever it is that you desire when you can turn around and share that with other people it's the journey that inspires people of all the things that you went through to get there because if you just got it right away like no one's inspired by that but when people are really in the thick of it they go and they hear podcasts like this or they read books and they hear these stories and inspirations from other people and they think to themselves like okay I just need to keep on going and I'll make it happen. So just know that when you're hitting obstacles or it's taking a little bit longer, that the story is being. Yeah, the story is being written, right? And your mess gets to become your message. I think that's super beautiful. Thank you so much for being here, Tara, today. Um, no, I really appreciate your time and your story and your vulnerability and your rawness and your realness. Like, just tell it like it is. Ladies, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Send it to a girl that you know that needs to hear this. And uh, we will see you definitely on the next episode. Bye, ladies.